In our previous video, we covered getting the boxes open for these 48 volt SOK server rack batteries. These are the 100 amp hour batteries. Now I want to cover getting them loaded into the rack. It's not quite as simple as just throwing them on in and screwing them in and calling it a day. There are some precautions you want to take to make sure that this is a safe and proper install. Now let's talk about the placement here. I would not want to put this rack right under this Solark 5K that we're connecting it to because for code compliance, you need to have a 30 inch wide space. And I forget the depth, but I think it's also like 30 or 36 inches um, around this Solark to have a proper working space. Now, if this rack was directly under the Solark, the rack itself would impede on the safe working space of the Solark, and that wouldn't be good. So as you can kind of see here, I lined up the right edge of my Solark to the left edge of the rack, and that's where we're gonna install this. Now you can probably see I have a sunny island here. This is gonna come off the wall here soon enough. So in terms of being code compliant, once that's off the wall, then it doesn't have a clear working space over here here. But either way, you want to make sure that you keep things clear. You don't block access to wiring the Solark with the rack because that would be dangerous and wouldn't follow code. Next up, we're going to focus on anchoring. Now, you wouldn't want to install the batteries into this rack unless the rack was anchored to the floor. It currently is not. Now, this is a concrete floor and the brackets of the rack kind of block access to this hole. So I'm going to just use a Sharpie and make a mark here where that hole needs to be in all four corners. And now I can move the rack, drill it with a roto hammer, and get my concrete anchors put in. So to pull this off, I'm gonna be using these 3 8 inch wedge anchors. These are just from Home Depot. I think they're Redhead brand. I can't totally recall. And to drill the holes for them, I'm just using my Bosch hammer back here, roto hammer, with a 3 8 by 12 inch bit. I'm just gonna line up on the mark I made and drill the hole. Then once you're finished drilling, I recommend cleaning up the concrete dust with a vacuum that has at least HEPA filtration. Here I'm gonna be using my shop vac that has a HEPA bag and filter. Now with the hole drilled, we need to get our anchors set. Now I highly recommend putting like 3 8 of an inch of threads past the nut here, but also getting that nut on and washer on and go ahead and get these anchors set before we put the rack in. Essentially just now, that nut acted as our stop, so we don't go too far in with this. But now I can go ahead and loosen that nut with a 9 16th wrench, and now I have my stud exactly where I need it to set the rack over top of it without going too far. And now with all those anchors put in, we can set the rack on top of them. As you can see, that anchor is in there perfectly, and now we can put our washer and nut on there just like that, and then get our wrench and tighten it down. So now that this rack is well anchored, it really isn't going anywhere. There's a little bit of flex because maybe one or two of the screws I didn't tighten all the way, but it's pretty solid and it's definitely not tipping over anywhere. Now it's time to load the batteries. I took advantage of this cart that goes up and down. Many of you guys have probably seen these online. So I got one of these. I slid this battery onto the cart and dropped it down about eight inches. Now, ideally, this cart would go higher, but I bought the base model. It doesn't go quite as high as the fancier model, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and get this box removed and slide this battery around here to the end of the cart. Now, I highly recommend loading from the bottom up. Again, make sure the battery is off, the breaker's off. We don't want these terminals here on the front to be powered up while we do this. So always load the rack from the bottom of the top. You don't want a top heavy rack, even though it's anchored to the floor, still best practice to load from the bottom of the top. Unfortunately, this cart didn't go as low as I had hoped. So for the bottom slot, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now I almost screwed up because I was about to slide this battery into the rack, but I have not yet put the captive nuts into the rack to screw the battery into. So let's do that now. Now this would have been tragic because you have to snap these in from behind. And if you have the battery in there, then you block the finger access for getting them in. So now I've lifted the back up and in, and now I can go ahead and slide that battery into the rack. And just like that, now we're ready for some screws to secure it in place. And there we go, one down, three more to go.
All right, so we're now we're all racked up. We're ready to proceed to wiring, and that'll be in the next video. See you there.